Okay. Hello, everybody. This is uh, SMT DDR. I decided to make a little uh, technical video talking about load testing using JMeter and Amazon Amazon EC2 service. Stands for Elastic Cloud. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're going to get JMeter, record a script, execute, and graph its results. So let's do that right now. Alright. Uh so first we're gonna go get JMeter. So we go J meter, okay. Download that one. And here we are. Copy the link. And let's do it. Uh demo. Okay. Here we go. Downloading JMeter. Downloading, downloading. Uh, just going along. Okay, let's see here. Almost. Downloading. Okay. Untar this file. Alright, and here we are. We don't need uh don't need that anymore. Okay. And we first type the command screen. It's we do split screen stuff. Like that. And sometimes I may need that. So I do that sometimes. That. Uh, actually, Jamie. Starting Jamie. Here we are. Latest and greatest version. Let's see, we're going to add a thread group. Thread groups say how many users and stuff like that, and what to do, and errors. That's what it's all about. We're going to record this script against the mobile version of YouTube because that is the uh, simple site, doesn't download too many things, keeps the test simple, doesn't make things too complicated, that's why we're doing that. Proxy server, port 8080, we're going to say, when we tell it to record, we record and put it all in here, that object, and YouTube. Test plan and YouTube, right? And uh, here we are. Start. Now we're going to Firefox. My Firefox is Japanese, uh, but it shouldn't be a problem. This will be for you settings or options. This is uh, the general tab. This is uh, advanced network settings, configuration, that kind of thing there. Proxy. It says not. This says not to use proxy here. It says manual configure. I'm gonna type localhost 8080. 8080 came from right here. Localhost means this machine, this machine that I'm working on right here that we're all looking at. I'll click OK. Click uh, cancel on that, and now I'm gonna go to M. YouTube.com. There you have it. And let me just show you what that looks like. The steps it's recorded. Some icons are downloaded and everything like that. So, let's keep going. Do that search. Results. 
See how it recorded that? See that's a search? It, it uh, puts the stringers together with plus signs. That's what it looks like that's what Google does. That's what it's doing. These are uh, probably the pictures. Uh, notice that YTMIG probably stands for YouTube Image, representing probably all little images and icons, stuff like that. Do one more search. Okay. And yeah, here you are. So, that's it. Uh, and now we go over here and click stop. And let's see what we have. We have the first loading and some icons, the second search, or actually the first loading of the uh, mobile YouTube homepage and some of the icons are those first default videos. Uh, first search and some other images and stuff like that and a second search. Some other images and then I clicked on watch the video and other images on the page that loaded. This seems like a good uh, good test. So that's that. I think we're done there. Um, let's see now. So we highlight that. Save test plan as uh, my J meter load test. Okay. And let's save. Uh, we're gonna change the number of users. We're gonna make it 55 users. And they're gonna loop in 10 seconds. And the ramp up time, which means how many, how long will it take for J meter to let all these uh, threads start? We'll say. Um, I don't know. Let's say 10 seconds. Or actually, let's say 20 seconds. Here we have it. Okay. Save. And close. So we're done with that. And we can change these settings back the way they were so we don't forget later. Okay. And that's done. So now we have that script. Let me go here. There it is, right? That's our script. The script is a uh, plain XML. So you can always go in here, even without starting up the entire uh, editor. Go in here and do stuff like this, like change it. Thread group number of threads. Ramp up time. And uh, let's see. And loop time in 10, right? Each thread is going to do all its actions 10 times. It's 55 threads or users. And it'll take 20 seconds for all to start. So I could just change it right here if I wanted to. Change it to 14 or whatever. So, we're, but we're gonna say quit. I'm not actually making any changes. Now we need to run this script. Let's see here. We're gonna run it here though, on Amazon server. Uh, so we go to Management Console, EC2, Loading, Loading, Launch Instance, Continue, Community, 64-bit, and Debian. There are other Linux distros, as you can see there are some that uh, Amazon provided, but I don't really use any of those. I am most familiar with Debian Linux, so that's what I always use. So let's see, let's just uh, load, it takes a little bit of time. Okay. Sort across, let's see here. For a bit, okay. This one looks reasonable. We're gonna use this one right here. So, move, click that, select. Okay. Now you can tell what kind of CPU. Now we're gonna use the extra large one. Keep in mind that we are doing this. This is actually gonna be pretty good for a regular test. We're actually gonna use some large, just regular large, seven gigs of um, memory. 
keep that in mind. Keep in mind that there's uh, this one right here. This is uh, one of the biggest ones they got here. 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, 68 gigs of RAM. So, we're gonna, but we're going to use this one. This is good enough for us. But keep in mind that this is available. Because I'm going to explain about uh, memory usage in uh, JMeter and Java in general. Let's see. We could say where we want it. But no preference. We'll just do that. We could change these, but we don't need it. Not for this example. We need any of that. Shut down behavior. Terminate. Because if I say shut down, it may stop. It may not terminate it and may incur extra costs on your credit card. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want to forget and leave it running for days because when you log out, it goes by itself. Move on. Stuff to help your name. I don't really need anything here. So we'll just continue. Nothing special. Great. Keep here. Let's see. This is my H key there. Alright, let's just do that. Let's do it like this. Okay. So it was downloaded. We're gonna need that. Uh, let's see here. So notice it's a lot of SSH. You will not have that if you do this by yourself. What you ha had to happen here is create a security group need to be able to SSH into this server that we're setting up. And this is how you do it. You pick that from the drop down and add the rule. All it does is open up port 22, which is SSH's default port. But we don't need to make a new one. We'll just pick the one I've made before. A lot of SSH. Go. This is everything. 4 bit system. This, this, this. Add a key here. A firewall. And everything's fine. Yep, I like everything I see here. No termination protection. Launching. Okay. Click on running instances. And you see that it's getting ready to start. Now, I already know that what we're going to have to do is uh, first. SSH doesn't like it when uh, the key the key file permissions are too open, so we're going to change it so that only the user or only the owner of the file can read it. Otherwise, it won't work. So we're doing that first, and we'll wait for this to start. CP dash I to use this key. Uh, let's see. And we're going to upload my JMeter load test. And it's going to be root at this location. That's where the server is. Copy. Paste. And here we go. Oh, that did not work right. Let's do it again. Okay, the first time that failed, it actually created this file here because we copied it literally instead of remote. So we're gonna get rid of that. That was an accident. And uh, it's been sent over there. So what happened here? That the file was copied to its uh, the server, the Amazon server that I just started. Okay. And here. Now we're going to actually go over to that server. Root. Okay. And that's it. And we're on the server. So we need two things on the server. It's fine. It's fine that we got our file there. That's great. But what we don't have on the server is two things. We don't have JMeter. We don't have Java. So we need to go get those things right now. You don't need the entire Java SDK because we just need to run stuff. So let's get on over there. Okay, whatever the newest version of the JRE Java Runtime Environment, 64-bit Linux. In case I forgot, you can always do that and do this. With x86 tends to mean 32-bit x86 underscore 64 usually means 64-bit system. 
and notice free dash m means in uh, megabytes showing me how much RAM is on the machine. Okay. Take it for a bit and then get the tar file. Copy it. W get. And let's see, do we reopen? Oh, no. So we need to open another tab and get back to that JMeter page because we need that actually. Do this. That change. The reason that you see me changing the other mirrors drop down here is because the default mirror sometimes is broken, and for this demo, I just want to make sure everything downloads properly. So here we are. Okay, so that's Java and that's JMeter on as downloaded. Uh, let's see, first, Jamie, and let's see, then we go to the op directory, tar, tilde, okay, uh, notice the permissions of this file, I don't like that, so you use CP, I don't know why it does that or who that is, but I prefer to change everything to be owned by root user and root group and this little fancy find command is what does that so I don't have any weird permission problems later, I, don't need, I want to think about it later and that's it, so there's Java now, we need to do one more thing I still type Java, it still doesn't know it's there here's what we're going to do I won't talk too much about what this command actually does but this makes the, the system know that Java is at that location. Like that. Now when I type Java for the game command not found, I get Java. So now we know it's installed. It's not there by default because uh, the license of open source software is not compatible with shipping uh, default Oracle's Java with it. So you have to go get it. And let's see, we don't need this uh, tar file anymore. We don't need that file anymore. All we need is that. Or, wait a minute. So all we need is this one. Now we're going to, before we run JMeter, we're going to make some changes. On a PC that has maybe 4 gigs of RAM, that's usually not powerful enough for JMeter to run big tests. That's why we use the Amazon machine, and we have to let Java know that it has more memory. So we do that by editing first, actually, this file. I like to change this right here, the heap size. I like to change this to be approximately 80% of the total RAM available. We saw 7 point something, so I'm going to make this 5,000. that. And I try and change this proportionately. This is about maybe one-fifth-ish of the heap size is what this uh, new thing is. I can't claim that I 100% understand what these values are, but I know that when I change them like this, my load tests always work very well. So that's that. And I don't like this though, because when there is a problem, it takes a lot of CPU to dump memory and I'm not interested in it because I'm not trying to debug Jamie. I just want to run it. If it doesn't work, just crash, stop so I can start over. So there we have it. And that's new. And each size. And we're, we're done with those two changes. And we're going to make another change. One more. The timestamps by default that's uh, printed out are like, I think, uh, epoch time or epoch time. And I don't care for epoch time. It's not useful to, uh, make a very readable graph, so we're going to change that setting. That's here. Where is that? Actually, where is that default? Where is the timestamp? Time. There we are, timestamp. So copy that line, that's the comment that line, uncomment, and remove this part. I don't really need milliseconds, so remove that. Okay. Now the timestamp will be human readable, hour, hour, minute, minute, second, second. 
H H M M S S. So hour minute seconds is what we're gonna have. I'm all set. Now I'm gonna run the script. Um, so actually, before we run it, in Linux and Unix, everything is a file, and the number of connections and opening up. Uh, if you had, say, parameters for your script, they had to open up some file. Um, all those file descriptors and everything count as uh, as open files. And there's a max, 1,024. For our, this load test, we probably, we may not hit this max, but if you had a load test in a major uh, job or so, and it took uh, maybe 17,000 users, you'd have to up this count because you're going to run out of file descriptors and your script your load test won't work properly. So a way to fix that is to do this. You can do that. Now this is uh, per shell, so you always have to remember to do this every time you open a new sh uh, bash shell or you spawn a new shell. And But for now, we've set that limit. You probably don't need it, but that's just to show you that you should always do that in practice. So now we're going to run it. Now you saw when I ran it, JMeter had a uh, a UI that you can click on stuff, but there's no UI here because it's on a remote machine. You do that. N means no GUI, so the UI will not start up. And we'll do, uh, let's see what else, P for the name of the script. And that's it. Oh, but it turns out I just realized I forgot something. So we have to go back and reopen the original script. Here. Uh, I forgot to add the part that uh, allow the script to record the results. So let me add that real quick. Let's see, add listener tree, add listener. Table. The table one is going to record everything that's happening. So we're going to go over here and just make sure it's all there. Active thread count is important. So you know how many threads are running at a given time. Save elapsed time is good and the labels are also good. Not saved as XML. We need the field names. So we're going to save as CSV. And those are the only changes we really need to make here. We don't really need this, and we don't need this, because they're XML and they won't keep it anyway. So we just don't check it, doesn't matter. So here we are. Now the one in tree keeps all the details, as you saw the result. You, when you have an error, you definitely want to know what all the errors are. So we're going to say errors.xml. Okay, oh, well, I, you can also open it here. That's what happened. That's what error message was. But we don't want to open anything. We just want to make the script record it. This is a CSV. I'm not trying to open it. Okay, this is CSV. So that's all it's going to be. And this is all uh, errors. And we said only record errors. Configure, and we want the response data, request headers, response. Those are the kind of things that are important, and number of threads that happened when it did it. And that's that. Those are important stuff there. So, let me resave this file. You have to close this. And I'm going to re upload this file to the cloud. Oh, hold on. Go back to here. Copy. Okay. Dash I. Tell the download. Okay, thank you. Upload that file there. All right, now we've done it. Close the split window and run the test. And test is running. Test is running. Running, running, running. Let's see here. Let's we'll let it keep doing its thing. Just wait around. Running through it. Right. Still happening. Still happening. Still running. Ok. 
Okay. It is done. LF. Okay, look at that file. LF is really H. We have a 1.6 file, WC-L, 1.6 meg file. The metrics have 19,000 entries. Okay. Let me switch over to the next window. And just like we used SCP just now, we're going to do it in reverse. We're actually going to download the metrics file to this computer, like that. Okay, view metrics. So this is the header. Notice that it's common delimited. All the, all the loads, see the, see the timestamp is uh, useful this way? Alright. And now, we start open office. That's how we're going to graph this. Now, opening a 19,000 uh, record file might be heavy duty on this machine and it might lock it up, so we're not going to do that right now. Instead, what we're going to do is say I want maybe every 100th line instead of, well, that's maybe too small. How about every 50th line? So we're going to do this. Said dash n one tilde every 100 print metrics. Let's see. Alright, so what this command does is, uh, starting from the first line, it prints out every 100th line. And we can see that by doing this. Now I have 99 lines. If I said print out every 50th line, it should get roughly double, right? Mm, okay, something like that, right. So, this seems reasonable. Maybe every 50th. Let's, let's say every 25th. How about that? Okay. Let's do that. And if I... Yeah, that's good. Let's just do that. Uh, metrics. Every 25th. CBS. There we are. Okay. This is important because if you were running a load test that had uh, 17,000 users or a huge load test, like say Amazon.com or Google.com probably has to run a huge load test, you definitely can't handle millions and millions of rows of data. Your, your Excel program or whatever it is will crash and you probably don't need millions of data points. You just need a rough estimate of how the load ran. So you can keep the original file for having to go back if you need that kind of detail, but usually you just need a general idea of the graph uh, result and you don't really need millions of points of data when you can take every 1,000th data point. So this is, uh, this will do. So here are our columns. Elapsed time is in milliseconds. There's probably some kind of ex uh, spreadsheet formula I can do to com divide all these by 1,000 and get seconds, but yeah, this is good enough. So here we are. And let's see, the last row I believe was... Oh, okay, actually I opened up the, the file with all the rows in it. Uh, we don't want to actually do that because the graph is going to take too long. It's actually going to lock up this machine. So let me go back and open up this file. This is better. All right. And the number of lines, and this should be around 378, because, well, let's see, three, oh, wait, there's, there's more, oh, that's right, that's right, because we added, we went for every 26th, so 793, that is the last row, that's important to remember, 793, let me bring up a notepad, that number here, 793, okay, so we're going to scroll back up to the top, here we are, here, we create a graph real quickly now. This is going to be a line graph. It's going to have no dots. The data range is going to be from here. Here, let's just do the first twenty. Get get an idea of how this looks. Say so finished. Now we're going to expand this graph. And here we are. Here we are. 
expanded. Okay, so look at that. So it looks like there's a spike here. Hmm, okay, that's interesting, that's interesting. Uh, let's, uh, make some changes. With one. Let's change the color, why not? Could be cool. Okay. So we got a red graph, and that's, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Now, that X axis doesn't look so readable. It's kind of, uh, kind of not that clear. Let's say I expand the range of data. Let's make it 100. Say okay to that. Now that's really becoming un unlegible. The cool thing about OpenOffice is it lets you it has a, a maybe, I'm not even sure if it's intentional sometimes, but it, it kind of helps you out with this. By so changes to 45 degree, look at that. Now that's readable. Also, observe it as you resize it. The x axis to granularity or a resolution changes so that it's always readable and shows you as much data as it can down there. Very helpful. And that is basically how I make these kind of graphs. Uh, now that we've done this, we're going to put all the data in there. What was that magic number? 793? 7993. Now, look at this graph. That is the graph of the load test that we just ran. Milliseconds is response time over here on this side. And uh, let's see here. So, response time milliseconds, and down here is current time in load, and that's that. And this is how you can run a quick load test in the world of JMeter using Amazon EC2 and graphics results. I use OpenOffice because I can't see a way to make a simple graph like this in JMeter. JMeter seems to have a lot of graphs, so it doesn't seem to have, to have anything. It just gives me a quick Y axis of response time and X axis of uh, time offset or even absolute time like this. So this is the way I do it. And if you have huge uh, data sets, millions and millions of uh, samples from uh, uh, a giant load test with maybe 20,000 users, something like that. This is how you do it using that grep command that I used to make the file smaller. And you saw how I adjusted the memory in, uh, I adjusted the memory settings in the JMeter uh, file for Java, the heap size, because you need that if you have 23,000 users or something like that, or 20,000 threads. Very important. And this is why I use Amazon EC2. It's relatively inexpensive to do this. This load test probably costs me nothing. Or something very low. Nothing uh, any company would have any problem paying for. And uh, that's it. And I turn it off to make sure I don't forget that the thing keeps running and keeps costing money. So it's shutting down. And that's the end of this load test. Thank you for watching.